I'm Nadia Sawala, a working mum to my gorgeous girls, Maddie and Kiki. Not forgetting wife to Mad Mark. And then, of course, there's my dogs, Chi Chi and Toffee too. Growing up, dinner was always a family affair. With my Arabic father and my mum's obsession with all things French, mealtimes were tasty and exciting. Over the years, I've begged, borrowed and stolen cooking tips. I love to cook and I'm always in my kitchen. And now I'm excited to be finding out about the fabulous family feasts people enjoy around the world. Ah! <laughs> Taking inspiration from busy households for simple recipes. During the series, I'll be hanging out with some fantastic chefs and cooks from every country imaginable as they share the dishes they grew up with and love today. I just want to feed everybody. Every one of which we want you to have a go at. Oh. And if that wasn't enough, they'll be sharing the ingredients they couldn't live without to help you along the way. Oh, naughty. So buckle up and hold on tight for my fantastic family feasts. Pick a quick button. <laughs>Welcome to Nadia's Family Feast. I am so excited about today's show because we are gallivanting off to Greece, a country famous for its islands, its ancient history and its blooming glorious food. And helping me to find out about all things Greek food is, here he is, isn't he lovely, uh, Greece's youngest ever Michelin-starred chef, Asimakis Haniotis. Is that right? Bravo, Nadia, Whoa! yes. You got it. <laughs> We're off. Oh, my goodness. If I were to say to you, we're in Greece, it's a family feast, everyone's around the table, what would we be eating? What kind of things? A, a million things. Like, every time we sit on the table, it will be different things on. One thing for sure, it will be like a million different foods on top. Everyone will bring their own, like, little salads, and someone will do the grilling, and someone will do, like, some uh, vegetables and different things. So Sassiki. I can't really say something specifically. The Ziki, Greek salad will be there, definitely. Talamo salata. Yes, always there. Like, we have Oberzin salad, like uh, Melza salata, it's gonna be there. Um, we have lots of like potato salads. You are the first ever, first ever Greek chef outside of Greece to get a Michelin star, and you're 27. 29. Oh. I was 27 when I got it, but I'm oh. 29. Oh, you're now. 27 when you got it, okay. <laughs> so, do I need to be nervous cooking with you today? No, really. Are you a no. bit of a show off? No. No, you are a show off. <laughs> I'm not a show off, really, myself. Let's show off together. <laughs> Here's what's coming up. Asimakis treats us to Greek scrambled eggs. It's called Kayiana and looks so good. I'm taking inspiration from my holiday in Kefalonia to make chicken gyros, and Asimakis has promised to make the ultimate tzatziki to go with it. For dinner, Asimakis is making gyro varalakia, a traditional meatball soup that tastes like heaven, and hopefully you'll be able to teach me how to say it. And for dessert, I'm making kurabiedes, melt-in-the-mouth crescent moon biscuits doused in icing sugar. Perfect to enjoy with coffee after dinner. So first, what's, what's a Greek breakfast like? I mean, I've had it, like, in cafes Tradi and stuff. Traditionally, um, as it comes from the ancient Greece or whatever, you will have dried fruits, dried nuts, uh, fresh fruits, and that would be the traditional Greek um, breakfast, I'd say. Now that we're cooking eggs and everyone's doing eggs, so we have our interpretations of our Greek breakfast, which now we're going to have a eggs cayenne that we're going to do now. That's what you're going to do now, eggs yes. cayenne. Oh, we've got some proper Greek stuff here, feta. Feta cheese. Oregano. Yes, that's one oregano I picked from Kefalonia myself. Did you? Yeah, we have obviously tomatoes. Okay, so should we get cooking? Yeah, of course. Go so... on then, let's see it. And you, as a child, spent quite a lot of time in your grandparents' farm, is that right? Yes, we have, we have a house and a farm in Kefalonia, mm -hmm. in the Union Sea. So I would go there when I was young, and then my grandfather and me would go down in the farm and pick up, like, our tomatoes for the day, just for the day, and the peppers and the cucumbers and everything. Um, and, I mean, like, that would give you um, how amazing that was, like, all these flavours and all this different aromas that you experience when you're young. I think we've just got to pause for a minute and note that he is grating a tomato. We don't often see that. Yeah, I mean, it's easier for boiling, peeling and then, and then blending, so we just grate it with the skin on. Ah. And you can discard the skins without having to do a million jobs beforehand, I suppose. Yeah. We want the juice there and we're going to juice this juice down so it will give us more intense flavour at the end when we cook the eggs. Do you want me to put the heat on? Yeah, please do. Okay. 
So here we've got the tomatoes. Put them on the side. Now we're going to crack our eggs open. And we're going to whisk them, make an omelette with them. Mm -hmm. And basically we want to reduce the tomato juice uh, for a minute or so, just to make um, the juice like, um, evaporate and give us a more strong flavor of the tomatoes. Oh, lovely. And then we're going to add the eggs in there and we're going to scramble them with the maris. We don't want to scramble them with a the whisk because we don't want them very, very fine. We want the bits in there. I love the way you're tapping your eggs together. That's a bit of a move, that is. That's cool. Here you go. And the last one. I'm going to do that. I better go and horribly then, wrong, though. <laughs> when we nearly, when the eggs are ready, we want to use the eggs here, a little bit of salt. Do they have olive oil in? Just a little bit. Have we got the maris somewhere? The what? The maris, the spatula. Spatula? Here, next like, to Like this? I got it. Or a spoon? Oh, OK. And then we'll reduce the tomatoes a little bit. And then we add the eggs, we cook the eggs, and when it's nearly done, that's when we want the oregano, because we don't want to cook the oregano too much. To take the flavour out. Take the flavour out and give the colour into the eggs, because if you put the oregano too early, right. the eggs will become green, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then put the oregano in there, and then we'll crumble the feta cheese on top. So we'll have a nice sourdough. So we're going to put a bit of olive oil and oregano on this, and then we're going to um, grill the bread as well. Here we go, we'll leave this there. Now the tomato is boiling, we're going to add the eggs. Ooh! And you do this a lot in Greece. The bread always comes a little bit charred on the Crispy, food. Crispy, yeah. And honestly, it is worth doing that, guys, because it just gives that extra dimension to the yeah. flavour, doesn't this, it? This smokiness, it will just bring the, yeah. Yeah, so much just more flavour the in dish. there. So I think now we're going to turn the heat off. So it will be nice and creamy. You don't want to overcook the eggs. Yeah. I hate overcooked eggs. Now the so, pepper's going a in. A bit of pepper. And then at the end now, we'll have to crumble the feather in there. So well, it really looks nice. We'll just so crumble with, with your happened. hands. Yeah. I'll say you can mix up a little bit in there, and then you can put some more on top of the plate when you serve it. Whoa. You're not putting it on the bread? No, no, no we're not. You no, we'll serve the bread on the side, yeah. OK. A bit more oregano on top. Mm. Here you go. Mm. Mum would be proud, proud, yeah? I like you. And I like your breakfast. Mmm! <laughs> and there's so much more to come. This is a great start. Well done. Now, we are going to find out a little bit about Asimaki's childhood and how it formed him into the fabulous chef he is today. Well, all started since I was uh, very young, I think around five, six or seven, and we used to go with my parents in our cottage in Kefalonia, uh, where they would have our grandfather growing up lots of things for us. So we have tomatoes, we have uh, peppers, cucumbers, lots of trees, like walnut trees, fig trees. I might go fishing with my dad, or might go get the fish fresh from down the shop, and we go back home and we just cook everything and we sit down on a big table with. 12, 15 people, and we just have a huge meal, like, I don't know, five hours meal. Back then, it wasn't an idea for me as very, very young that I wanted to become a chef, but I fell in love with food generally. I decided I wanted to become a chef when I was around 16, when it came to the point that I hate school, I don't want to be there, I don't want to study anything, and then I signed into a cooking school when I was 17, and everything went very well. I ended up being one of the best students of the here when I finished. The reason I came to the UK is because it has more, lots more opportunities and lots more Michelin-star restaurants that we have in Greece. So in Athens, we only have two or three Michelin-star restaurants, and that's all in the whole country. Where here you have 45 in London and around another 20 in the whole country. So definitely we have more opportunities here. Think that the only reason I'm here at the moment in London having a Michelin-star at, at the age of 29 is because of very, very, very hard work. The amount of hours that I've spent into doing this, the amount of things I've sacrificed, are, you know, so many. The time we found out that we retained our Mr. Star definitely was one of the proudest moments of my life, of my career, uh, what I was working so hard for so many years for. So when I got the call and I said that you got it, um, I just jumped off my bed. You know, the feeling was, it just, you can't explain it how amazing you feel at that moment, how proud you feel for yourself, how proud you feel for your team. 
you worked in every day so many hours to make this dream come true. So here we've got my mum's snails. It's snails with uh, baby onions, tomato, red wine. We've got garlic, we've got bay leaves, we've got raw spice. And that's a very special dish for me. Um, that's a dish that I'm having always when I was a kid. That was always in my childhood. It was always like a dish that we always have on a special occasion. So we make it like twice a year. Obviously, you have people, they, they hear that you have snails. They go like, oh, why you have snails? It's so such a weird ingredient. And they go like, how you tried it? Say, no, but I don't want to. I don't like the way it looks. I don't like the way, you know, it's slimy and stuff. We go like, at least you try one. And if you don't like them, just never eat them again. But I generally am open in life. I want to try different things. Yeah, so it's meaty and earthy. It's more sweet than sour, to be honest. It just brings you memories back of your, you being a kid and enjoying life and food, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, I'm so jealous of that upbringing. I, I love Catalonia because I've been to Greece many times, but I had never had gyros before. Yeah, spinning means gyros. That's oh, what that's it what means. it means. Yeah. Come on, so let's when spin. It spins, yeah. Spin. Gyros. Yeah. Here you gyros. go. Gyros. Gyros. <laughs> oh, actually, <laughs> might have gone too far. So I'm <laughs> gyrosing for you today. So I'm going to make a marinade for my chicken breast here. So I've got chicken breast, and into my bowl, I am going to put. Yogurt, Greek yogurt. I can't eat any other kind of yogurt. It has to be Greek yogurt, no matter what I'm having. Yeah. So, a teaspoon of paprika. Is this no. weird yet? No. This might be weird. Sorry. What's that? Cumin. Cumin. Bit yeah. weird. It's a little bit, yeah. Bit weird. Would you bit. usually put that in? No, really. Oh, but well, that's my little Middle Eastern <laughs> influence. So we're sharing our, our 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 foodie cultures. Bit of cumin. And if you don't mind, when you weren't looking, I stole your oregano. Oh, no. I know, and you went I, I all the back. way to Greece. I want it back. <laughs> <laughs> you went all the way to Greece to get it. But I cannot not use it. It's so, so good. So now I'm going to put some garlic. Would you normally put garlic in your yeah. gyros? Yeah. So a couple of go. tablespoons of olive oil. Just, just, just a little bit. <laughs> well, because we're using chicken breast as well, we want a bit of fat in there, don't yeah. we? Oh, could you cut that for me, darling? I'm not going to put the salt in because when you're marinating meat, it's not a good idea to put the salt yeah, in, is it? Because it, it, it dries it out. Cures, yeah, it cures the meat and dries, dries out. Dries it out. That? What am I going to do with that? Just put it in your lemon and squeeze Spoon. it. Yeah. It's a bit weird. Yeah, go on. It's not really getting into the lemon. <laughs> turn it, turn it, turn it. <laughs> Show me. Here you go. Yeah. Oh, oh, wow, look at that. You have nothing That's left That's fantastic. Over. Thank you, darling. Just clean here. Yeah. Put that in the fridge to marinate. Um, and actually, while I'm here, I'm going to get out your cucumber. Amazing. There's your cucumber. Yeah, so that's because... training. That's training for an hour now. Yeah. More or less. Because you are going to make me a satsiki. The proper I one, yeah. Love it. Okay. Right. So basically, in here we have a grated cucumber. Yeah. Which we seasoned it an hour ago. Look at all that. The only reason we do this is because we want to get rid of the extra liquid inside because when you're going to marinate your uh, cucumber in there, when all this liquid go out, it will be very, very watery. So we want to be nice and thick. Basically, we're going to put the yogurt in there, in the bowl. I mean, my, my friend's mum, she's Greek, she puts it in a... Um... Yeah, in a cloth and just twists it out. <laughs> and, and, it's, yeah. and it comes out like a dry ball. Yeah, like a dry ball, yeah. yeah. In my recipe, I like to add a bit of fuzzo in there, and I think it brings a yeah, it brings a little bit of uh, makes it different. Personally, I would never say no to uzu. <laughs> yeah, it's a drink, rather yeah. lovely drink. <laughs> so we want just a twenty milliliters of fuzzo in there. Um, so here we go. Can we just, just double just check it. it's a good uzu because we don't sure, want a try bad. Try a little bit. We don't Not want a bad much. one in there, do we? <laughs> oh yes, that's very yes. We don't mind that. And one. then a bit, of, very good. a bit of white wine vinegar. <laughs> that's always there in the recipes. So now we're going to grate the garlic in there. Oh. So we need a lot of garlic in there. We do. And then obviously, yeah, I'm, I'm using dill there because that's what right. we're normally making with. No mint. Wow. No mint. This is where we're going to fall out. No mint. I've loved everything you've done so no far. Mint. You've done really, really well. No I mint. I know you're Greek. <laughs> I know you've got a Michelin star. I'll put dill in there. I love the amount of garlic, perfect. The yogurt, perfect. Marinated the cucumber. You've lost me now. 
Why? I don't like dill. Why? I like mint. Why mint in there, though? What's the reason? that's what I've always had in my satsuki. Well, that's why you owe everything you had it was wrong. <laughs> since now. <laughs> now you've got to have the right way. But I don't like dill. You're going to put all that dill in there? Yep. And you're going to love it. OK, so we add it in there. And at the end, we add a bit of salt and olive oil. A fair amount there, I suppose. Oh, I love it. It's so rude, isn't it? All that creamy yeah. yoghurt. I always come back from Greece having put on weight, I have to say. So I'm going to put this in the fridge now. Right. It will be nice to marinate for an hour or two, and then we're going to take it out when you're ready with your gears. Oh, OK. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to give you dill a go. <laughs> I'm not happy about it, but I will. <laughs> so I've got all my stuff here to make my lovely bread, which I'm going to show you yeah. how to make Greek bread the cheek of me. Um, we've got our marinated chicken here that I'm going to get you to grill for me. In here I have my gorgeous chips. Over here I have garlic olive oil, tomato, onion and feta and oregano to finish the whole gorgeousness off. OK. Pressed? It's gone. Right. So in here I have self-raising flour. OK. Um, my gorgeous, gorgeous thing that I love so much, Greek yoghurt, I can't get enough of it. Putting baking powder in. Um, teaspoon of salt. The bread. good thing with this bread is you don't have to rest it. No. Because normally you have to rest the bread. So you make it straight away, put it in the pan, and yeah. kaboom, it's ready. So is this a bread that you make? That no, you I don't really make this bread. I'm, I'm very oh. like interested now to see how you're going to make this. Oh, really? Yeah. You're interested? It's very, 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 very exciting. He's a big flash <laughs> chef running a restaurant in London. He's a Michelin star. He's very fascinated by <laughs> my bread. <laughs> We've got a nice hot pan. Yeah. Right, how are we going to make it into six? Cut it in half. Yeah, cut it in half. And then you need to make three out of the halves. You make so three. Three, and three, okay. And cool. I'll make three. So, nearly done. Roll it. It's like play school. It's playtime. It's as well, yeah, isn't it? You're dying to do this for me, aren't you? Show me how you do it. Go on. Give me some tippage. That's what I was doing. My mind doesn't does stick on, the, on there, does it? Yeah, why isn't your sticking? Yeah, that's lovely. That'll do, yeah. love. Okay, so now I'm just going to put a little olive oil. And I'm going to put some sesame seeds. Is that something you're doing, Greece? Yeah, we'll use them, yeah. And they're, so, very, and they're very good for you as well, isn't it? Very good. Very, very good. So, just going to put that in my pan. And now we're just going to wait. Rolling, rolling, rolling. This is a really nice one, guys. Let me tell you this lovely thing that you could do for breakfast, because I've got really full of myself now. Go on. This, in the morning, with some Greek yoghurt, some honey, and some some herbs, the oregano or something. Yeah, very, very Delicious. Nice, yeah. OK, so there we have it, our first okay. bread for our giros. <laughs> Drop it there. So would you mind getting the chicken going for yeah, me? Yeah, of course, I'll do that And now. give me any tips you can. The, the best thing to do with that is to oil your pan, first of all. You want a very, very hot pan, so it sears the chicken immediately. And this will give a sort of barbecue flavour, yeah? Exactly, yeah. yeah. Obviously, if you've got if it's nice weather when you're cooking this, get the barbecue out, guys, because it's so much. It's always delicious. So, on the so, barbecue, so much isn't more it? different. Yes, the smokiness of the charcoal goes inside the meat and just different level. Yeah. Uh, you can do it. You can do it. You can make this bread. You can. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> oh, look. Another gorgeous bread. Ready to do the chips. Double carbs. So now, if you'd like to take your bread, sir, and what we're going to do is just build, build and build. So I start with a bit of satsiki without nice. mint, and I'm going to add some chicken. And to that, I'm going to add some tomato and some onion. And then I'm going to add my chips. Can you believe it, guys? Bread in chips. So then a little bit of fresh oregano. Yeah. And a little bit of feta. And then, of course, we have the giro. And all we have to do is munch it. That is. I've been able to teach this boy a thing or two about Greek food. Look at you. Ah, what do you reckon? Greek food. Mmm. 
Better than mine. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> In a minute, you're going to be cooking for us your gorgeous meatball soup. Can you see the way I'm swerving around the Greek word? <laughs> <laughs> what are meatballs and soup in Greek? Yuvalagia. 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 But first, let's have a look at his ingredients. So here we've got five ingredients that are very special to me. So we've got rice, we've got salt, we've got tarragon, we've got eggs and celery. Here we've got rice, which one of my best ingredients when I was young. I used to love it in rice. I will, I will eat rice with anything. So with rice, we have a million recipes that we can cook back home. But one of my favorite ones, it would, it would do stuffed tomatoes with rice, uh, vegetables, garlic, onion, lots of herbs, dill and mint. Here we've got salt. I never like to put salt at the end of the meal because chances are when you're going to put salt at the end of the meal, on top of your meal, the salt will not dilute into the food. You will think your food, is, your, your food is salty. So what you have to make sure, you have to make sure that you cook your food with salt beforehand so the salt goes inside the food, inside the flavor, inside the sauce and everything. So it gives amazing taste. Here we've got eggs. That's my favorite protein to eat and that's because it's a very, a very versatile ingredient. So with eggs, you can use the whites to make desserts. You can make you can use yolks to make ice creams. You can make omelets, which is amazing. You can make uh, five different, six different ways of cooking the eggs, which you cannot do with any other ingredient if you really think about it. Tarragon um, is one of the herbs. Every chef has a favorite herb. So for me, that's tarragon. Um, it has a very special flavor. Um, a sweet, unique, and amazing flavor that in I don't put it everywhere, but where I put it, I know that's a special dish for me. You can ruin the dish or you can lift it up. My favorite vegetables is celery because it's the most flavorsome vegetable you will ever find. Because it will give amazing flavor to sauces in any stews. Whenever you're gonna put celery, you will know that you're gonna end up having a food that's gonna be very, very, very tasty. You will never see them like as stars in, in, in a dish, but they've always been very, very amazing on giving the flavor in this dish. Um, I've got a bit of a problem. What's that? You know how I said I didn't like dill? And yeah. I really don't, but I did like it in your tzatziki. Yeah. I really don't like tarragon. So what do you like? I like everything else apart <laughs> from dill and tarragon. <laughs> no, I mean tarragon. Don't tell me you're going to put tarragon in these meatballs. No, we're not. Oh, we're going to put dill, though, which oh. you don't like, apparently. <laughs> show us, show us, show us. We're excited. So okay. first of all, I want you to chop me one onion, please, and the garlic. I'm going to use my magic little machine. Oh, my. I think you, I think you should get this in your Michelin restaurant. No way. I'm th thank you. I'm good. Thank you. I'll be fine. Oh, you're going to be so impressed. How would you like them chopped? Uh, finally chopped, please. Finally chopped. The good thing is, I also get a workout. <laughs> so unimpressed. So, yeah, put this in. He wants to say that's not good enough, but he knows it's perfectly fine. He doesn't want fine. to. OK, so... We'll have half an onion here and one another half an onion to cook with olive oil and sweat it down. Chopped? Yeah, please. What have you done? So in here You've we have... You've been putting things in there without telling me. What's in there? <laughs> so in here we have <laughs> the veal mince. We've got one egg. Veal mince. Yeah. Yeah. One egg, salt, pepper. Yeah. Half an onion, finely chopped. <laughs> and we have one bunch of dill, which we'll finally chop as well. Deal. So you've used this pudding rice, like a risotto yes. rice? Yes. Yeah, and is so, that because it's So this will, will suck all the liquids in there, all, all, the, all oh. the juices, all the flavours, and then will make the meatball as well more, more wet and more juicy mm. at the end of the day. Would you have it in the evening or for lunch? Uh, Anytime. We'll have, we'll have it like... My mum will cook it in the morning and we'll have it for lunch and dinner. And then we'll have it something else for the next day. So we'll start with a bit of olive oil in the pan. What's wrong Rush. with you? I'm crying. What's the matter? It's the onions. <laughs> <laughs> You've not even been anywhere near them. <laughs> well, I'm here, don't I? <laughs> oh, okay. my goodness, you're really suffering. Are you OK? I'm fine, yeah, I'm fine. Do you need some time alone? <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> so we'll mix everything together. Oh, now, can I ask you a question yes, about go that? Yes, Because you're really pounding that, aren't you? You're squeezing yeah. it, you're squishing it, you're yeah. working it. We shouldn't always do that, should we, with our mints? Can it make it dry? You cannot, like make, it, you cannot make it dry, but if you, if you want to fry it, it's like when you make a dough with the bread, the more you knead it, the more it goes tense. So you tense? Need, yeah, so it, it goes more hard. So yeah. you need to let it rest for a while if you want to deep fry it, I'd say. So if you're doing that, let it rest before you fry it? If you want to fry it, but this, you don't, we don't fry it. Just yeah, put yeah, it. yeah. 
So when we set when we spread the onions down, we won't have a bit of salt there as well. Do you want we me have... to chop the garlic for you too? Yes, please. And now we're gonna do around 30 gram um, balls with this mince. Yeah. So more or less this size. Make sure we squeeze them a lot so yeah. they go. We have In a, a Michelin restaurant, mix. because everything's so perfect. Yeah. Would you weigh? Would you weigh? Eat, would you weigh each meatball? Well, normally the restaurant will have around five grams, so they're very, very small and tiny. Mm. So you have the lemon sabagin on top, and this makes it really when you eat it, it's like you eat. So say that recipe. again, a lemon sabagin. Sabagin. What's that? So basically, is um, like sabagin. You, you mix, you you whisk the eggs until they reach seventy-five degrees, and then you add in the. Um, a cream which whipped. Oh, you like like Sabaglione, the Italian exactly, yeah, dessert. Yeah, exactly, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. So tell me about your tattoos. Oh, my tattoos now. OK, so <laughs> on my fingers, I have um, written Cook Love, because obviously it's about my love for cooking. Mm -hmm. um, I had this like three, four years ago. And it's just because it's a part of me, I just wanted to have it What did your mum think? Not yet. She doesn't like it, really. <laughs> oh, you looked yeah. about six when I said <laughs> she doesn't like it, really. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, cute. She hates them. So do we need the stock in? No, we put the balls in first in the pot, oh, and then we're going to add the stock. Oh. So we're going to build them all around the pot, and then yeah. we're going to add the stock in there. OK, so now we get the pan back on the stove, mm. on low heat, and we're going to add the meatballs in there. You use very little onion. It's interesting. I think we, I maybe go over the top with we, everything. We just want the onions to give a bit of flavour mm. into, into our soup. That's the only reason we added it in there. We're not really eating them, we're just flavouring. Well, yes, you're going to eat them at the end of the day anyway, when you eat the soup. But um, you don't want a lot of onions in there. Mm. So, we're going to add the meat What's going to be the predominant taste then? The dill? I think so, yeah. Yes, it is going to be the dill. And, and, and the lemony soup, there's going to be lots of lemon in the soup as well. Oh, so, mm. we fill up the bottom with the meatballs. And then I'm going to take these things away quickly. I'll come back in a minute. Mm. I'll grab my brick apron here. Put your apron on. Ooh. Yeah. We've not had an apron yet this there series. Why have we well, put on mine. an apron? What's going to happen? So no, I just don't want to get a mess with the, with the eggs. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I'm expecting big things now. So now we're going to add the stock in there. Beal I'm stock. going to put this, yes. So we want to cover the yuvarlaja. And that's going in cold? Yes, and put it as well a little bit more. OK. So just over the cup, covering Yes, over. and we'll have a bit of leftover rice, like a couple of tablespoons, and we're going to add this in there as well. Mm. Which thickens it a little bit. Yes, and gives a bit more um, substance onto the soup. Mm. So we're going to cover this, mm. and when it comes to the boil, we're going to drop it on low heat and simmer it, because we don't want to break the meatballs by rapidly yeah, yeah, boiling yeah, yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And meanwhile, we're going to go here, and we're going to make our liaison which is called I've got lemon in Greek, and basically is a liaison based with eggs and lemon. So we're making a meringue with the egg whites. Meringue? Yes. So... Wow, this recipe is blowing my mind. I can't here even we are. picture it. So liaison uh, would be a way of thickening sauces with eggs. Like you, you have oh. our roots, you have roux, you have corn flour. Uh, you can use blood of thick... You can use blood of thickened sauces in soups as well. Um, because when, it's, when, when you boil and it goes to a certain temperature, it sets. And when it sets, like you make a custard. When your eggs are cooked, they will set to So custard. you are going to make an egg mixture of some sort called liaison. Exactly. Which to... is going to thicken the soup. Exactly. Oh. Here we go. So now we have to Never heard that break before. the eggs and tip the egg whites. You're doing that funny thing with breaking your eggs again. Why do you do it like that? Because we don't want to have the bacteria of the eggshell going onto our bowl. So you're you separating go. the eggs. Yeah. And you're going to make a, like a meringue thing. Yes, with the egg whites. And then slowly I will add in the egg yolks and then the lemon juice. Ah. I love this because I literally cannot imagine it. I, I, don't, I cannot imagine what's going to happen when you put that in there. I'm just imagining it all goes a bit gluggy like scrambled egg. I'm going to wash my hands. I come back. Shall I start your fit whisking? Yeah, you can. Don't make a mess. I won't. Get it? A little bit of salt in there. No salt, you're gonna cure the eggs. Okay. And I I'll... never get over the magic Very of nice, whisking yeah. egg whites. So, so amazing. So pretty. So we add slowly now the egg yolks, one by one. 
Uh, your spatula for me to help me put this in. Yes, yeah, sure. I got them inside here. Here you go. Good eggs, huh? Yeah. Lovely eggs. Now we're going to stop it for a minute. And now we're going to cut the lemons and we're going to squeeze the juice inside there. So now our, our soup is simmering, so mm. we'll leave it there for around 10 minutes. We squeeze two lemons in there. Can you hold this for me? Yep, sure. We'll in... Don't spoon. Your weird way of doing a lemon. Yes. No waste, yeah, zero. We put the, the sauce from the soup in there, first of all, because we don't want to burn the egg yolks. So we do it slowly. And then when this comes to a certain temperature, like 40, 50 degrees, we're going to add this back to the pot and we'll bring it up to 80 degrees, more or less, to have it ready. Here you go. Okay. okay. So we'll give a quick whisk here as well. Nice. Hold this here. You whisk that. And I come over here and add some of this boiling Oh my goodness, you're gonna put that in there? Yeah. <gasps> Slowly. What's gonna happen? Getting quite hot. Yeah, that's good. So you're eventually aiming to put all the sauce in? Yeah, more or less, yes. So now we're nearly done. So you can stop with this now. Steve on sound. Let's see your happy dance. <laughs> And then yeah. we're going to add this um, sauce into the oh, pan. Oh, I'm so excited. So we have this foam on top, which yeah. we want it to stay on top. Yeah. So we start going slowly here. Oh, wow. And drop it back in the pan. Wow. OK. Now, you don't want to boil it, because if you boil it, this egg will crumble, will scramble up and it will have cuts. What a disaster. So we keep it slowly here on low heat. But you're trying to keep all that bubbly foam at the top. Yes. Yeah. So, you know this little thing you're doing here? Yes. Somebody seriously wants to have a go at so this. So, if you see now, the, the, this, the soup is quite thick. OK, so it's not like the water there was before. Let me it's have a go at what thick. you were doing. Okay. That's it. So you're just mixing it just mixing without it, stirring it? Exactly. That's so all. Because you don't want okay. to bake the foam on top. So we turn this off. Put the lid on. Put it on the side, keep it five minutes, and then we're ready to go. That sauce is so special. It's so mm. light. Because it's like it's got kind of a creamy feel to it without having any cream. It's yeah. almost yeah, yeah, like yeah. you would be thinner after you've eaten it. So, what, not... so when I'm cooking, you eat the dill, yeah? Yeah. Is that right? Guess what? <laughs> I'm going to be making really lovely biscuits for after dinner soon. And guess what? I'm not going to let him put any dill in it. <laughs> <laughs> this is so good. Mm. So far today, we have feasted upon Asimakis sensational scrambled eggs, or as I now speak Greek, I prefer to call it Kayana. My tasty chicken gyros served with Asimakis amazing tzatziki. And before the break, Asimakis served up a dish I think the Greeks have been keeping a secret from us Brits until now. Jorva Lakia meatball soup. I am so excited to share these biscuits with you. I made them at the weekend and my family haven't stopped eating them. You love them. They're delicious. Is, ha, is this right? No. Oh, Kurabiedes. 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 Here you go, yeah. Kurabiedes. Um, so, lots of lovely ingredients. I'm going to start with, by putting some softened butter. Take it off or...? No, no, we'll Maybe. just do it um, Into my gorgeous mixer here. And the first thing to do is just... And, and I've never done this before. I always put my sugar with my butter, but apparently this is the proper patisserie yeah. way to do you, it. You whip the butter first. Whip the butter first. Never done that. So turn it up a bit. So we're just wanting it to get paler. A little fluffy yes. and pale. And softer as well from the Soft, friction yeah. on the, of, the, of the mixer. It goes a bit softer as well. Yeah, absolutely. OK, so that's soft, it's pale, it's fluffy, I'm happy. So now we are going to add lots of icing sugar. Mm -hmm. So it was nice to sift it before because sometimes you had lumps I know, off. chefs always say that, but I can't no, be this bothered. This probably been sifted. I know I should have sifted it, but I... maybe the kitchen fairies sifted it. <laughs> did the kit? Oh, they did. I love my kitchen fairies. <laughs> egg yolk, lovely, good quality egg. Um, some brandy. Hang on, let me just check. I just need to always just have a little tiny bit quality just control, to check <laughs> that the quality is excellent. <laughs> it's excellent. Okay, some brandy. 
about 50 mils. Like that. I think yum, yum. Guy, don't worry about it, guys. Presumably, I'll, I'll this later. <laughs> presumably, you could use uzu there too, could you? No? Uh, you you could if you want to, but I mean, like, brandy has very strong flavour, which is very good for cakes, I suppose. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so some vanilla extract, good vanilla. Don't use, don't use rubbish vanilla because then your biscuits will take, taste rubbish. So, um, a teaspoon of vanilla. Yum, yum. Oh, I just love vanilla. It just does something to me. I just love it. So now I'm going to whisk this. Now, you want to start your mixer really slowly because otherwise what will happen? Ooh, which is quite fun, actually. Sometimes I just do that to make my kids laugh. They're like, Mom, Mom. So I did it on purpose. And then you clean so just, it. Yeah, just start it off slowly. <laughs> And then it's not going to go crazy now. We can speed it up a bit. So nice and soft. Gorgeous. Actually, we need to give it a little... Let's give it a little wipe down. Thank you, my darling. Yeah, no, sorry. I, 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 am, I am a bit lazy with my sieving, I must say. No, but it's, well, it's important, fine. isn't it? So tell me what other desserts do you have in Greece? Um, baklava? So, baklava, yes, yeah. is one thing. Um, I'm not really a fan of, of, savory, of, of desserts. I'm more like a savory kind of guy. It's amazing but, how many chefs say that. Yeah. 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 Uh, so we'll have baklava, we'll have a thing that we we'll call milk pie. So we'll basically have filo pastry in the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then we'll make a, we'll make a let's say, um, like a custard with mm -hmm. semolina, eggs and, mm. and, and sugar. And then we'll put this in the bottom and we'll have a bit of orange blossom and friends oranges in there. Then we'll put this in the bottom and we'll put lots of filo pastry on top. And then we'll bake it in the oven and then at the end, when it's hot, you're gonna add a bit of um, Honey? stock syrup on top. So basically, it's, it's a syrup that's 50% sugar, 50% water. Oh, nice. And you just add it on top. Syrup. So when you put it on top, all this, all this, because the cake, the, the mix is hot, it sucks all the, all the, all the oh, sugar yeah. in there and it's very, yeah, it goes nice and, yeah, Yum. OK, now for my almonds. There we go. That's what they looked like before. And um, I'd love to say to you that I did that again today and that <laughs> I bought them and I soaked them and I popped them and then I put them on a baking tray and roasted them. I but I didn't. Really like that. I didn't do it. <laughs> my kitchen fairies did it and I'm very grateful to you girls. So I'm going to put that into my um, butter and sugar. <gasps> the smell of it already. I'm going to add some plain flour. So be careful again with this. Why? Well, well we've got to be careful. The speed on Oh, fire. yeah, yeah, OK. <laughs> <laughs> some self-raising flour, some baking powder, and a pinch of salt. And, oh, great, some freshly grated nutmeg. Oh, yum, nice. yum. It's got to be fresh, isn't it? So nice. Christmassy. Christmassy. Oh, so you nice. You can put cinnamon, if you like, if you don't like nutmeg. Yeah, so, you can, actually. So now I'm just going to really gently almost fold in my flour into my butter, my sugar, my nuts, my vanilla extract. So we're almost there. Oh, we are there. Let's stop. Oh, mm, here we go. Now, I got into real trouble with this last weekend when I was making these because I couldn't stop eating it. I probably... The raw, the raw mix. It's yep. very nice. Yep. I probably had about eight biscuits, just raw. Really? <laughs> oh, my... So bad. Don't do that, folks. I regretted it. And then I did the classic. Everyone else was eating their roast dinner. I was like, no, it's all right. I'm not hungry. <laughs> you know, my grandmother used to put um, ash from the, from the fireplace in there. I don't know the ash? reason. I, I don't know the, really, the, the, the reason, really, but just dust off some ash and put it in this mix. Uh-huh. But I never found out of why. So is that a traditional thing, then, to put ash in your biscuits? It is, yeah. No, not, not all biscuits, just, just this recipe and this biscuit. Should we have a go at making some? Yeah. OK, come on, you can do it beautifully and I'll try my best. Yeah, you, so, have, um, you have a few different ways of making them. Yeah. You can make it like a star. OK. You can make it like, um, like a little burger. OK. But it's nice to make them like, like half moons or something. Oh, that's a good idea, to roll it over your finger. Yeah. OK. Is that too big? So like, 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 a, like a peanut, more or less, I'd say. Oh, mine's a bit big, then. Yeah. Let me don't make mine a bit smaller. Because you're going to make them, when you, when you bake them, they're going to go down and they're going to yeah. push the, of the butter, yeah. and they look huge. Mmm. Oh, so, do you see what I mean? It's so delicious on its yeah. own, isn't it? You don't need to cook it. It's very, very dangerous making these biscuits. Very <laughs> dangerous. But I would recommend you make double the amount so you can eat it before you've cooked it without anyone knowing. Mmm. <laughs> 
It's, I mean, there is a lot of butter in this, but that's why you get that gorgeous, yeah. crumbly, almost shortbread. I mean, mostly in everything, even if you make a savoury things or not, the flavour is in the, in, in the fat you're using. It is, so the more it? fat you have in the, in the food, the, the more flavour the food will be. And that's why if, you, if you're if cutting down on fat, you've got to put lots of herbs and spices and yeah. things in to counteract. Oh, yeah. These are not for dieters, but they are special. And you know, like you said, if it's just for Christmas, just special occasions. Yes. That's why everyone after Christmas is like... Five, six more kilos than it used to be. <laughs> exactly. I love that technique to do that. It's so clever. Mm. What temperature do you bake them at? Um, 160. For how long? For about 20 minutes. You want them to be a light golden colour. Nice. Nice. You're Would ready? you agree? Yeah, I agree with you, yeah. Yeah, good. What do you mean? You've learned a lot today. Yes, thank You've you. You've basically learned to thank agree you. with thank me. You, Nadia. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Are they ready? Oh, well, they smell ready, don't they? You can smell gorgeously oh, yummy so nice. cookie butter and sugar and... Golden oh, brown. Golden brown. Look at that. Look at that. Now, obviously, these weren't the biscuits that I put into the oven earlier because they were all misshapen. But because of him, basically. He made a terrible mess. Blame me now. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so our kitchen fairies have done them for us, which is very nice of them. So while they're still hot, I'm going to mix some water and some orange blossom. If you don't like orange blossom, oh, why wouldn't you like orange blossom? It's you can water. use rose water. Uh, will be just as lovely. So we're going to brush our biscuits. Yum, yum, yum. And it really does add another dimension to it. Right, now we're going to put them in the icing sugar. This is such good playtime. Come on, we want loads of it. Oh, yeah, Christmas time. Snowy. I can see why you do these at Christmas in Greece. <laughs> OK, and then we put, we sense. want them really sugary, OK? So just put them on our rack. <laughs> I'm sure there would have been a better way of doing it. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> you messed it there. <laughs> mm. You know, I'm wondering if a little zest in it, a little orange zest... Well, you, could, you can't put it... Uh, I put it on just in my mince pies. Yeah, no, but do just... you think some orange zest would be nice in well, this? Well, in these biscuits, would, yeah, it? very nice, yeah. yeah. Cheers. Mmm. 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 Mm. Mm. Very so nice. Crumbly. Very nice. So sweet, so buttery, so nutty. What a fantastic Greek family feast. Especially for you guys. Have a go at all of the recipes because they're all blooming lovely. Mm. Here you go. So good. Ah! Oh my I wondered what you were going to do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you little devil. Fine. Pos, Don't be. Pop. <laughs> that was such a shock. Who's done that? You did it. You started it. <laughs>